Islam, as we discussed in class, is one of the Abrahamic faiths. It is monotheistic, and their holy book is called the Quran. Muhammad is considered by them to be the last prophet of God. A believer in Muhammad and the teachings of Islam is called a Muslim. The primary practices of the faith include the five pillars of Islam. For Sunni Muslims, these practices are clear. Muslims must believe the Shahada, a simple creed that states, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Salah is an Islamic prayer and consists of five prayers daily. These prayers are directed towards Mecca, located in modern day Saudi Arabia. Psalm is ritual fasting, especially during the month of Ramadan. Zakah is giving to the poor. If one cannot afford to give, good deeds and behavior to others can satisfy this rule. Finally is the Hajj, or the pilgrimage. Every Muslim is obliged to make the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in their lifetime if he or she can afford it. The term Islamic art not only describes the art created for the Muslim faith, but also includes the art and architecture produced in the lands ruled by Muslims, for Muslim patrons, or made by Muslim artists. Calligraphy is the most important element in Islamic art. It's always been considered the noblest form of art because of its association with the Quran. In general, calligraphic inscriptions on works of art comprise one or more of the following types of text. Quranic quotations, other religious texts, poems, praise for rulers, and aphorisms. This concern with beautiful writing extended to all of the arts including secular manuscripts and inscriptions on other works of art. Another characteristic of Islamic art is a preference for covering surfaces with patterns composed of geometric or vegetal elements. Complex geometric designs and intricate patterns of vegetal ornament called arabesques create the impression of unending repetition, which is believed by some to be an inducement to contemplate the infinite nature of God. These designs remind us of the complex interlaced designs we already looked at in Viking interlacings and insular manuscripts. Non-representational decoration may have developed to such a high degree because of the absence of figural imagery, at least within a religious context. Partially as a result of this religious attitude, figures and artwork were often stylized. In Islam, the decorative arts are the primary means of artistic expression. There's a famous saying, in everything there is a sign which bears witness to his oneness. 
Islamic art tries to accentuate that aspect instead of hiding it. Everything is marked by beauty, even the things of common daily use, from shoes, combs and cloth, to kitchen utensils. That is one of the reasons why in Islam there is no distinction between fine arts and non-fine arts. When we go into a church, the thing that attracts our attention is often a painting, statue, or image that represents the presence of the divine. In Islam, when you enter a mosque, what characterizes it is emptiness. Here, the lack of any point as the center indicates the divine presence. The architecture of mosques depends on where you are and when the mosque was built, and there are many styles. Most medieval mosques had a large open courtyard when you first came in, and then an inner prayer room. Inside the prayer room was a mirab, a niche or a hole in the wall which showed the Qibla, or direction of Mecca, because all Muslims pray facing the holy city of Mecca, the birthplace of Muhammad. A minbar is a pulpit in a mosque. Placed next to the mirab, the minbar is used with the Friday sermon and the person performing the sermon ascends it, but he stops on one of the lower steps as the top of the minbar is restricted to the prophet only. A common feature in mosques is the minaret, the tall slender tower that is usually situated at one of the corners of the structure. The top of the minaret is always the highest point in a mosque. The muezzin climbed the steps inside the tower five times every day to sing out the call to prayer. In this way, everyone knew when it was time to pray. The word mosque in English refers to all types of buildings dedicated for Islamic worship. The Arab plan, or hippostyle mosque, is the earliest type of mosques. They have square or rectangular plans with an enclosed courtyard and covered prayer hall. Historically, in warm climates, the courtyard accompanied large numbers of worshippers on Friday prayers. One of the most notable hippostyle mosques is the Mesquita de Cordoba in Spain, which is supported by over 850 columns. The simplicity of the Arab plan limited the opportunities for further development, and these mosques would lose popularity. Architects began adding domes, enlarged arch entrances referred to as iwans. Eventually, the four iwan arrangement took form and established the courtyard facade, with a square central courtyard with large entrances at each side, giving the impression of being gateways to the spiritual world. This distinctly Persian style would significantly influence the design of later mosques throughout the world. The Ottomans introduced central dome mosques in the 15th century. This style was heavily influenced by the central plan Byzantine churches, such as the Hagia Sophia, with its use of large central domes. This is the Blue Mosque in Istanbul. These mosques have a large dome centered over the prayer hall. A common feature is smaller domes that exist off-center over the prayer hall or throughout the rest of the mosque, as we see in this mosque from Cairo. Next we see the Islamic Cultural Center in New York City. A quick glance reveals a minaret and a dome, visual clues as to the nature of the building. The geometric form of the mosque, based on a recurring theme of square units, follows Islamic traditions. Upon entering this multi-purpose postmodern building, we discover traditional ornament is subtle. Look carefully at the etched windows and the calligraphic frieze around the dome. 
Stripped of the rich detail we've come to expect in Islamic buildings, it nonetheless has all the essential parts to function as a mosque. The primary arts of Islamic civilization are architecture and painting, the principal form of architecture, the mosque. Other great Islamic buildings, both secular and religious, reflect the same aesthetic. The main components of a standard mosque plan are a courtyard and a prayer room, the latter of which includes a minbar and a mirab, a niche that indicates the direction of Mecca towards which Muslims direct their prayers. Islamic painting is chiefly devoted to calligraphy and abstract patterns of interlacing lines. Representational art is rare. Both calligraphy and abstract patterns are often used to decorate both mosques and everyday objects. As you prepare to research and write about Islamic art and architecture, be sure to compare and contrast the similarities and differences to the other art forms we have examined this far in the course.